Okay, 2011, question number one is calculator problem. These are both 15 minute problems on this section. There are two problems on the calculator, four on the non, 15 minutes per problem. It gives some information about a particle moving along the x axis, and they, they tell you the position is x t, but they don't have an equation for it. They give the velocity equation, 2 sine e to the t over 4 plus 1, and the acceleration of the particle, the derivative of the velocity. And they give the initial condition for the position. All right. I'm thinking fundamental theorem of calculus has got to appear here in A, B, or C, or D at some point. Because they give me an initial condition. But maybe not. But that's just my first guess. A, is the speed of the particle increasing or decreasing at time t, 5.5? Give a reason for your answer. The big thing to catch here is it doesn't ask about velocity. It asks about speed. Now, understand speed. If you are moving forward and acceleration is positive, you are getting a higher speed. If your velocity is negative and your acceleration is negative, you are getting faster and faster backwards. That is also an increase in speed. It's like driving your car in reverse. So what I have to do is just check V of 5.5. And I plug that into this equation. And I just put in 5.5. And we should get that the velocity was negative. 4.4533. 4,533 ten thousandths. And then if I check A of 5.5 into this equation, which is which is just a lot of plug and chug, right? I get that it was negative 1.3585. Alright. And there's a gift to the no units on this. There are no units. I'm look, I was looking to put units on this. I see no units. You guys all agree? Yeah. Okay, no units. All right, so what's the answer? The answer is speed is increasing at time equals 5.5 because, now you guys would spell it out, though, V of 5.5 and A of 5.5 have the same sign. Or you could say they're both negative. All right, that would be credit to. Okay. So when you talk about points, just two points. It, it's all here. Two points for this reason and conclusion. You need both. Two points. Pretty straightforward. Again, not not what I would term to be a hard open problem. All right. So that's it. As long as you understand what speed is, that's what the test. Find the average velocity of the particle for the time 0 to 6. Okay. If we're going to find the average velocity, we're going to have to do an integral. All right. So if we're going to find the average velocity, all right, we have to realize that's total distance divided by total time. So in this case, we're going to have to see that from 0 to 6. So this is going to be one sixth or one over, think of it this way, six minus zero, right? And think about the units, that would be time over the integral of zero six of vt dt. That integral is worth a point right there. That, somewhere in that notation. All right? If you have just this and divide by six, I think that's poor form, so you could probably get credit. All right? What if we had not? The function, that's fine. You put this in there, that's fine. I'm not going to even though. Now I'm typing this in my calculator, guys, just as it is. And when you hit enter, you're going to get the value. And that is worth a point also. So this is only a two point problem, too. Okay? So, relatively quickly again, we get through A and B. Find the total distance traveled by the particle from time equals zero to time equals six. Now your calculator will do this again. The total distance here is just the integral from zero to six, absolute value of v of t dt. And again, you just yeah. And listen, this is a time sucker. If you decided this is on the calculator, remember you, you have absolute value as an option on your calculator. So just plug this in where you plug this in for v of t. And if you do that math, you don't need to figure out a. That's yeah, you don't have to figure out. You don't have to figure out changes in position. You know all that. You can just do this. Down calculator. 
when I integrate it. And this on the answer key here, it only had three decimal places. Left digit is three. Is it three? All right. 12.7533. Three, three. Should we take a second and do this on our calculator? Yes, because I don't know the S is actually Pause it and we'll take it. So we use two calculators to get a snapshot here of how you enter it. The integral from 0 to 6, absolute value of V of T is shown right here. And at the end it's with dx, forget the plus 0. And when you do that to four decimal places, we get 12.573. Alright, I would argue we, you know, we got six points, so we know the last one's worth three. I would argue that the first three have been fairly straightforward, so I'm not sure what to expect on the last one. From 0 to 6, the particle changed direction exactly once. Okay. Find the position of the particle at the time it changes position. Okay. When a particle is changing position, what do we know about its velocity? Zero. It's going it's to positive and negative. It's going to be it's zero. Uh, it's going, well, no, it's, right. it, it's a critical point of position function. It's a critical point of position function. So the question is, where does this equal zero? So I just write this and then use your solver, right? You plug in this function the equals thing zero. Is, solver gave us a different number, so we just use the graph. Well, what? you should have got the same. Number, it should be 0. 0.5. I, I got that 3.0461, blah, 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 and that answer was wrong. It was actually class oh. 1955. Oh. Yeah. I got. I would, I you, you must have typed it wrong. I tell you what, it will work. You do that to get that. So we have that time. So now find the position of the particle at this time. So now this is the fundamental theorem of calculus step, and we're going to want the integral. So we're going to want x sub 5.1955. You guys agree? That's going to equal. I would argue it's going to equal x of 0 plus the integral from 0 to 5.19955 v of t dt. I would enter in at the very least the position functions for the initial conditions. I would write this as 2 plus 0 to 5.199, ah, 1955, sorry. V of T dt. And you just gotta put this in your calculator. If you spit this out, you're gonna get fourteen point one three four something. I don't know, does someone have the last decimal point? Eight. Eight. Because they gave credit, the AP gave credit for two answers. The AP gave credit for both of these answers this year. Okay. But again, fourth decimal place. Now if we review this then, you got a point for this. If you consider V of T equals zero someplace. That's a point. You got a point for the integral. Okay. Which would be that. You got a point for the answer. And there is a note here that says it does. There's one note they put in that I didn't do, actually, right here. They put a step in the AP solution where it says V of T changes sign from positive to negative at time equals 5.1955. To make sure, you know, that this was an actual direction change, they checked both sides. I took them at face value. But, you know, I suppose it was possible that this curve kissed and then crossed at a different time. So checking for a sign change probably was a mistake on my part. I'm almost surprised that wasn't worth the point, that you would have checked for the sign change. Found the zero, made sure that it was a sign change. Again, this was a 2011 calculator problem number one.